Hi folks, I'm Mary with Oakland County Parks and Recreation's Nature Education Team. Each week we're going to release a video, craft, and activity on a nature topic. This week is Michigan Turtles with Melissa and myself. Let's go! Now let's talk about some common Michigan turtles. I have some examples of shells here and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, some of the turtles I don't have examples of later. To start off, this is a shell of a common musk turtle, also known as the stink pot turtle. Um, they're kind of small and they live most of their lives in the water. Um, you won't commonly see them on land, uh, but they um, are called a musk turtle or a stink pot because they emit a smelly liquid if they're handled as a defense mechanism. Next, this turtle here is a uh, Michigan painted turtle. So um, this is the Michigan reptile here is the painted turtle. Um, just note how large uh, the bottom part of his shell is and the top part. And um, he is a fully aquatic turtle. You'll only see them out of the water once in a while. This turtle is less common in Michigan and actually being studied. Uh, for its different populations to be protected. This is a Blanding's turtle. You'll know a Blanding's turtle because it has a very domed shell and um, when you see them in the wild they have a very yellow chin. The last turtle shell example that I have here is this big guy and you probably can guess based on the spikes on the bottom this is a common snapping turtle and they are Michigan's largest turtle species and you guys will probably know them for their snappy attitude. Melissa will fill you in in a little bit on why that is. I have another example of a turtle down here. You guys have met our eastern box turtle before um, and box turtles are really cool um, because they have a hinge right here and they can fold up like a box. Melissa will explain a little bit more about that later. Some other turtles that are common to Michigan that I don't currently have examples of are the common map turtle and the spiny softshell turtle. One more turtle that we'll see a little bit later is um, right here, Michigan's wood turtle. And I also don't have an example of a spotted turtle today, but we'll meet our wood turtle in just a little bit. Hello everyone, I'm Melissa with Oakland County Parks Nature Education Team. Now that Mary's talked to you a little bit about the turtles that you might see in Michigan, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, their anatomy and some of their adaptations. So um, let's first look right here at the um, snapping turtle that Mary talked to you guys about. Very distinctively but um, um, visible because you can see the um, the spikes on the um, shell right here. But what I want to talk to you about is the shell is actually made up of bone. So this is a big part of what protects the turtles because they don't have um, they have this nice bone covering and they don't have a good way to necessarily get away from predators so they use this to help protect them all right so if we look at it inside there this um, this top part is called the carapace right here and inside you can see the spine that is so this turtle is attached to this shell he's not going to ever get to leave it so and then the ribs come out so that's what helps form this carapace and helps protect the um, turtles all right now the bone is actually covered with scales and just like other um, reptiles they will um, shed some of these scales or scoops as they're called um, so sometimes you'll see them um, starting to kind of peel off and stuff like that now the other type of turtle um, that we have here is the painted turtle that she talked about but we have the carapace this is the plastron of the turtles okay and you guys can see the plastron of this turtle is fairly large so a lot of the turtle will fit into this shell to help protect him okay so you guys can see how big the plastron is compared to how large the um, carapaces 
of these guys. Okay, so now um, you may think that most of our Michigan turtles are aquatic where they live in the water, but that's not the case. This is our eastern box turtle, and he is a terrestrial turtle that lives on land. Um, you guys can tell he's got this nice domed um, carapace, and he's got a really large plastron on the bottom. And if you look closely, you guys can see he's got this hinge right here. This hinge allows him to pull his legs and head all inside the shell and close up to where he is protected from the predators. And they'll, he'll use that bony carapace to protect him from the predators. Now, if you'll notice, before we got um, this eastern box turtle, a predator was able to get to him. So he doesn't have all of one of his back legs, but that does not prevent him from moving around. So um, this is our eastern box turtle. We'll talk about aquatic species next. Now that we've talked about the terrestrial tur turtles, let's talk a little bit about our aquatic turtles. Our aquatic turtles um, live most of their life inside the water. The only time you're really going to see them outside of the water is if they're basking in the sun to warm up or if they're outside the water laying eggs. Um, so this right here is an example of one of our aquatic turtles. This is the shell of a painted turtle. So you guys can see it's got its carapace, but also it has a very large plastron. It is not hinged like our box turtle, so he cannot close himself up completely. But what happens is if a predator or a human even comes up and gets too close to them, they're going to slip in the water to get away. All right, so this is, um, so that's one of the adaptations of the painted turtle is that they have like this large um, plastron to help protect them, All right? Now, let's talk a little bit about the snapping turtle that Mary introduced. This is the shell of the snapping turtle. But if we turn this shell over, you guys can look at the plastron of the snapping turtle and how very small it is compared to the um, carapace of this shell, which means he is not able to pull himself back into, the, uh, into his shell to protect him. So um, he has a very snappy disposition to ward off the predators because if he gets flipped over, he is very vulnerable to his predators because there's nothing there to protect him. Okay, so we don't want to get very close to this guy because if he does snap, he can hold on very tight to help uh, protect himself from the predators. And you do not want to be putting anything down there for him to snap onto. Hi everyone. Now we've moved outside to talk a little bit about the life cycle of a turtle. Um, a female turtle may come out of the water and travel quite a distance. So if you see a snapping turtle outside of the water, more than likely it's a female and she's moving to lay her eggs or coming from laying her eggs. So the turtles, whether they're a snapping turtle or the painted turtle like we talked about, they may move quite a distance from their lake or their pond on land to find the best spot to lay their eggs. Once they find that spot, they're gonna dig a hole, they're going to deposit their eggs, and then they're actually gonna cover that hole back up and they may actually urinate on it to help pack that soil down so it's not as noticeable by predators. Um, then, as they are heading back to the pond, they're going to travel that same distance back to the pond. So, if you notice a turtle outside of the water, more than likely it's a female coming from or going to lay their eggs. Okay, so if you see a turtle laying a nest, we need to try to protect that nest. Um, nests are um, more vulnerable because of habitat loss and um, the rise in predators like raccoons. So um, the number of hatchlings are actually going down. So we need to actually protect those nests and protect those hatchlings if we know where a nest is being laid. So like in the baby animal video, um, you can actually use a nest cage, turtle nest cage, to go over it to help um, defer those predators like raccoons so they can't get in there to dig out the eggs. 
Hi folks, so we've talked a little bit about how to help wildlife and how to help turtles and I just wanted to show you um, a little bit of nest predation and why it's really important that we try and protect nests. So um, raccoons and other uh, predators do really well in urbanized settings um, like our suburban areas that have grown up um, and they outcompete the turtles here um, because turtles are losing habitat. So um, we have a site here that's been um, dug up probably by some raccoons in the area and um, they've had a tasty meal of the turtle eggs. So what you can do, and we mentioned it in our baby animal video, to protect turtle nests if you see one being laid um, is within the first 24 to 48 hours when that urine is still fresh is when uh, scientists have found that there is the most predation of those turtle nests. So you can take one of these and it's just a large gauge wire um, cage and you can put it over the nest and sink it into the ground really well. And what this will do is it will keep predators like raccoons out, um, but also let the um, hatchlings escape this cage through these large spaces once they've hatched so that they can continue on um, to the pond or lake that they're gonna live their lives in. Now that we know why the turtle crossed the road, Here's how to help our turtle friends get across safely. First, you'll want to only stop if you're sure it's safe to do so. We want to help our animal friends, but not at the expense of our own safety. Secondly, it's good to keep a pair of gloves and a shovel in your car to help move turtles. Turtles can bite and scratch, and they also carry salmonella bacteria as part of their natural gut fauna. This is really good for turtle digestion, but it can make people very sick. So snapping turtles can be very aggressive and you can use a shovel to scoop them across the road. Also, if they're very snappy, you can take a, a large stick and get them to bite on and kind of move them across the road that way. This is our wood turtle um, that I talked about a little bit earlier in the program and he's going to help us demonstrate how to move a snapping turtle safely across the road. The first thing you want to do is put on your gloves to protect your hands and um, from the sharp claws that turtles have and also to keep that salmonella off your hands. Um, so the area that you're going to want to pick the turtle up in is um, behind the rear legs and you can use two hands to do so. Um, this is an area that even the um, the longest necked snapping turtle really can't get you. Alternatively, another good choice is to put one hand there and support the bottom of the turtle shell um, with your other hand. You never want to put, uh, if you're handling a snapping turtle, your hand on the top here behind his head because he can turn his head over backwards and snap you that way. So again, two hands behind or one hand behind and one hand under. Um, it's also important to note that you never want to pick any turtle up by its tail as this can cause damage to its spine. And lastly, when we're helping move our turtle friends across the road, you want to move them in the direction that they're going. If you move them back to the start of their journey, they'll just have to start that perilous journey all over again. It's important to help our turtle friends across the road because a female turtle that is out laying her eggs may spend her entire adult reproductive years just trying to replace herself in the breeding population. Thank you for helping animals. Thank you for joining us. Feel free to share any um, photos that you have or comments that you have below. Um, and check out our website for park or nature center hours, programs, and any amenities that are open. And get outside, stay safe, and we will see you next time.